When we think of things increasing, we generally think of something like water being poured into a glass. The more water we add to a glass, the more the water in the glass increases. But this type of increase does not exactly apply to the virtues. In this video, we will talk about virtues increase and decrease in the human person. The story is familiar to us. Maybe it's even our own story. The most famous tales in history, everything from Homer's The Odyssey to J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings, portray the dynamics of virtue. They depict the internal struggle we all experience in the quest to grow in virtue and to find the happiness that human flourishing facilitates, and to avoid the decline in virtue that results in human frustration or at worst, human destruction. We recall that the virtues are habits, stable, perfective dispositions in the soul that enable us to perform good actions promptly, joyfully, and easily. Unlike water, the virtues are not physical or material realities. Therefore, virtues do not increase through an addition of more virtue, as if justice were to increase through adding more justice to the will of the human person. An increase in virtue happens in the person himself, the person participating more fully in the habitual form of the virtue. A person grows in the virtues when he or she more perfectly participates in the virtue. Growth or decline in virtue is more analogous to the dynamics of heating. A rock becomes itself more or less warm in proportion to its participation in the form of heat. The heat of the rock is not separated from the rock itself. Likewise, in virtue, the increase in virtue is not separated from the human person himself. How do we grow in virtue? We recall that there are two broad categories of virtues, moral virtues, or human virtues, and theological virtues, or supernatural virtues. We recall further that a virtue is the habitual perfection of a human power, whether it be the human power of knowing, the human power of loving, or the human powers of feeling. A natural moral virtue is strengthened in two ways. One, by the virtue's own act. You are what you eat. You become what you do. And you become virtuous in yourself by doing virtuous things yourself. Thomas Aquinas explains that if one wishes to become a just person, a person informed with the virtue of justice, for example, then deliberate and regular acts of justice, even when they aren't easy, are effective ways of growing in the virtue. Two, Aquinas also explains that we can grow in a specific virtue through the acts of other virtues. Because the human person is one, a unity, the virtues are all connected. Therefore, the acts of one virtue can aid the increase or the exercise of other virtues. For example, the man who wishes to become more temperate in his consumption of food or drink is aided by his possession of the virtue of prudence through which he judges what the balanced temperate mean is. Consequently, there are two primary ways of growing in the theological virtues. First, the reception of the sacraments, particularly mass and the sacrament of penance or confession. Second, prayer. The sacraments and prayer are the means through which we grow in the theological virtues. We recall that the theological virtues are imparted to the human soul through the sacrament of baptism. When people are baptized, they receive divine grace in their souls. This grace transforms their powers of intellect and will. As the baptized child grows, he or she receives their first communion and the sacrament of confirmation. These sacraments uniquely and powerfully confer a deepening of divine grace, a greater sacramental union with God, and thus 
a greater intensification of the theological virtues. If the divine life is expelled from the human soul through an act of mortal sin, the sacrament of penance, confession, restores the divine life of grace and the theological virtues to the soul. Therefore, anyone who wishes to grow in faith, hope, and charity ought to receive the sacraments with regularity. This is one of the key reasons why all Catholics in normal circumstances are obligated to attend Mass each Sunday. Prayer is the second means through which the theological virtues are strengthened in the soul. Prayer increases our faith, our hope, and our charity because it actively unites the human person to God. We often think of prayer as asking for things from God, and this, of course, is a perfectly legitimate form of prayer. The essence of prayer, however, is much simpler and much more profound than petition. Prayer is any raising of the mind to God. The simplest way to pray is to speak with God freely, deliberately, comfortably. Because prayer unites us to God through prayer, the human person grows in faith, in hope, and in charity. The theological virtues come from God directly, and they are directly linked and ordered to God. Therefore, the two primary ways of growing in faith, hope, and charity are through the reception of the sacraments and through prayer. How do the virtues diminish? The virtues diminish through acts contrary to the good, acts contrary to the virtues. In the case of the moral virtues, we compromise and weaken the virtuous habits of prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance through intense and repeated acts that are contrary to the perfective good of these virtues. For example, a man may have the virtue of justice. He is a just man. Nonetheless, it is still possible for him to act contrary to the right order of justice, perhaps through acts of dishonesty, stealing, or infidelity. And should he begin to act in ways contrary to just order, the virtue of justice in his will would diminish to such a degree that he would begin to suffer from the disorder of the vices of injustice. Thus, just as we increase and augment our participation in the moral virtues through virtuous acts, so we compromise and diminish the moral virtues through vicious acts, acts contrary to the good of the virtues. How do we diminish the theological virtues? The theological virtues are weakened when we do not regularly direct our powers of knowing and loving to God, the source and the end of the theological virtues. How do we lose the theological virtues? The theological virtues are lost through deliberate acts of grave sin, sins that are objectively disordered, ordered away from God. How are the theological virtues restored? Through confession. In this sacrament, God reorders us to himself, no matter what our sins might be, and reestablishes the theological virtues in our souls. For readings, podcasts, and more videos like this, go to Aquinas101.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for one of our free video courses on Aquinas. And don't forget to like and share with your friends, because it matters what you think.